If you love it, why don't you marry it? You know what I'm saying? If you love it, why don't you marry it? Guys, welcome back to the Dirtbag Outdoors YouTube channel. It is a great day sitting in front of me. I have some 22 pistols. TX-22, Taurus, you guys, you know I like it. I do. I may, I, maybe I love it. I don't know. If you love it, why don't you marry it? You know what I'm saying? Look, we got that. We got the Taurus PT-22. This is the, the thing we're gonna focus on the most today, just a brief little video. We're gonna do a little bit of shooting, look at some groups, and just kind of a quick overview of this old school Beretta Bobcat style-ish 22 pistol. And then just for kind of for size comparisons, I got a Sig Mosquito. I, I, I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't recommend this gun pretty much whatsoever. I've got a Ruger Mark IV Lite. This one is pretty fun, super reliable. I just wish they, they came in higher capacity. But anyways, look at this. We're gonna put this one to the side. T, uh, PT-22, sorry, this is the Taurus PT-22. I've had this gun for a long time. I got it as a gift. I'll probably never get rid of this thing. And uh, let's just go over it real quick. So it is an eight plus one 22 LR pistol with a tip up barrel, as you can see. All right, it's almost like if you guys know about the Easy Shield, how they're meant to be easy to load, easy to use. Uh, this is kind of the easiest you can get. You tip up the barrel, there's a little lever right here, it tips right up, like so. You load your first cartridge into the chamber directly, okay? Put the barrel down and you're, at this point your magazine is either inserted or not. But the magazine holds eight. Uh, there's no extractor on this gun. Uh, it's a direct blowback design, so it, it uses the force of the explosion to actually eject the case out of itself, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's got roughly, I'd say, two and three-quarter inch barrel or so. Uh, it's fairly light. I think it comes in at around 12 ounces loaded, give or take just a little bit. The, one of the main differences between this and the Beretta, though, is the fact that this gun is only uh, is double action only. Okay, there's no single action, double action. The Beretta does have double action, single action operation. All right, they both have a, a similar safety. The mag, uh, the magazine release is a little different on both of them. A lot of the Berettas will have it down here in the grip, or this one is a kind of a traditional on the on the frame here behind the trigger guard. The sights are very crude, but they are there. You got you know kind of fixed, milled into the the slide and barrel, front ramp and rear slotted sights there. Trigger pull, like I said, being double action only, I don't have a trigger gauge, but I did some some homework and it, it appears that the general consensus is somewhere around nine pounds. Some people are averaging a little over eight, some people a little over nine. So call it eight and a half, nine pounds average for the double action only trigger pull. It's fairly smooth, it's a little clunky, a little gritty. There are a few times where I feel like the resistance or the weight, I guess you would say, of the trigger pull varies a little bit throughout the, the trigger. So I don't know, My, mine's pretty old, it's pretty beat up. I think these started being made in the early 90s, maybe? They, these were US made, as far as I know, in Florida, actually. They, these weren't imported from Brazil or anything like that. But guys, they don't make these anymore. It's, it's kind of unfortunate because th these things are a love-hate relationship, I think, with a lot of people, myself included. It's, it's kind of one of those things where it's not the worst thing I've ever owned or shot, but it's far from the best. But you know, these things were, Shoot, back then, you know, a little over hundred bucks, and even th these days, if you find them new, still you're you're not far over two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks, brand new, and they're a fun little plinker. I think some people probably carried these. I would personally never. That's that's kind of uh, personal opinion. Your your mileage may vary with that. You may want to carry something like this. It is very small. Uh, speaking of small, let's do just some quick size comparisons. Here is the Taurus TX-22. You guys know one of my favorites. This thing, it is an absolute mini-me. It is so small in comparison to the TX-22. Completely different designs. I mean, they're, they're not even in the same family, really, but just a size comparison. The Sig Mosquito. Again, this gun I wouldn't really recommend to anyone. It's basically a manual bolt action unless you use a very, very certain one kind only ammunition. Kind of size comparison. And then the uh, the Ruger Mark IV. These are great, accurate target rifles. Target rifles. Target rifles. Kind of a size comparison there. The gun is small. It is super small. I have medium, large size hands. 
Um, my finger is almost at the end of the barrel if I extend it all the way. But I don't know guys, I really like it for what it is, but I also hate it for what it's not. I don't know if that makes any sense. We're gonna take it to the range, we're gonna do some groupings. I know this one, if I remember right, shoots high left, so I'm gonna have to kind of do some Kentucky windage and dial it in, and I'm gonna aim low right. We're gonna see if we can get some decent patterns, some decent groups. We're gonna take just a couple different types of ammo, nothing crazy, no big torture test or nothing. The gun itself is fairly reliable. It, it really is, I don't have too many problems with jamming or anything like that, just kind of your standard 22 rimfire problems you're gonna get anyway with a lot of it, right? Let's be honest. So yeah, guys, there is the Taurus PT-22. Take another good look at it. It is pretty cool, it's small. It's got a girthy grip though. I mean, she's she is compact, but she's got a little bit of girth to her. So keep that in mind. If you have a really small hand, it, it may actually feel too, too kind of fat for you. I'm not sure, but I like it. It fits my hand pretty well. We're gonna go take it to the range. We're gonna put just a few rounds through it, different types, see what it groups like. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna report back, show you the targets like I always do, and talk about it a little bit more. Until then, let's hit the range. We've got Federal Bulk Auto Match 40 grain. This is the stuff that guns usually either love it or hate it. You know, uh, cheapest stuff at Walmart typically. We've got some Mini Mag HP, the high velocity hollow points. These are 36 grain. We've got some Winchester, 22 long rifle, 40 grain. That's the Winchester Super X. And then over here on the right, we've got some CCI Standard, 40 grain, 22 LR, lead round nose. Guys, we're gonna be shooting at a target seven yards away. Let's, uh, let's do this. I've got I've got pretty good feeling about it today. I feel like I'm gonna be shooting good. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens. All right, guys, I've got the PT-22 Federal Auto Match Bulk 40 grain. I've got four rounds in the mag, one loose, we're gonna go ahead and insert the mag, tip up the barrel, load our fifth one in, shut her down, and see what happens at seven yards. Let's see, I'm excited. My predictions are, I'm actually gonna go with CCI standard shoots the best, we'll see. First shot, we got a failure. Not ideal. That was a failure to load a new round. Let's try it again. Failure two on round two. All right, guys, I'm loaded up with the CCI. Mini mags. Four in the mag. One in the barrel. Let's see if this stuff does any better than that Federal. That Federal stuff was not ideal. All right, let's load up the next. Guys, just like that, we are back from our little test with the PT-22. I got you I got you zoomed on in here a little bit more than normal. Uh, check it out. We shot four different ammunition, five round groups at seven yards with this little guy, all right? We shot Federal Bulk Auto Match. We shot Remington Thunderbolt, which I thought was Winchester Super X, but Obviously, I put some extras in there. I don't know. I don't know. But we're using Thunderbolt. We shot the um, CCI Standard, and we shot the CCI Mini Mags. All right. I think I was right. I think when I was out there, I said the CCI Standard would probably shoot the best. Um, we're going to get into that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at the target. You guys know how I do. Get right to business. All right. We're going to go over it. But there are our groups. They're kind of all over the place. The point of impact uh, to the point of aim on this gun is all over the place. Each ammo has a completely different point of impact. So for instance, just, just so you guys know, the Federal Bulk, I was aiming down here, okay? 
I was aiming a good five, six inches from where this actually hit. I was actually aiming about right here, thinking that it would just shoot a little bit left and hit right here, but it shot way up here with that. And obviously the Federal bulk stuff, it didn't, it didn't like it whatsoever. It was a single shot. It had a failure 100% of the time. Every single round it had some sort of failure. So obviously you can't recommend that. Uh, group wise though, five shots with the Federal, we shot a 2.3 inch group at seven yards. That's not really that bad. I, I don't think it's that bad for what this is. Uh, next we shot the Remington Thunderbolts. No, actually, actually next I think we shot the, uh, the Mini Mags. I think we shot the Mini Mags second. Mini Mags cycled fine, no issues. Didn't really foresee their, foresee any to happen, but we shot a 1.8 inch group with the CCI Mini Mags. That's pretty good. I think that's pretty good with bad sights at seven yards, freestanding, 1.8 inches. I think that's pretty good. Then we shot the Thunderbolt. Again, it was reliable out of five shots. Um, no failures whatsoever. We shot a 3.15 inch group though. It opened up a lot with the Thunderbolts for whatever reason. And then last but not least, the CCI standard go-to ammo. Everybody likes it, you know what I'm saying? We shot a 1.75 inch group. That's pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty small target, you know what I'm saying? And, and we ended up with a pretty good group. I'm happy with that. It grouped better with that than I actually had anticipated. So it was kind of a kind of a learning experience, but I got to thinking while I was out there shooting, why do you, why do you guys think they don't make this anymore? Is it just, I'm assuming just because they weren't selling. I mean, why else would somebody stop making something? Uh, they probably weren't selling. It's, you know, I think it's a cool design with the tip up barrel. I mean, you've got new companies, or not new companies, but companies coming out with new guns that are tip up, like the uh, tip up Beretta style, 380 from, um, from one of the brands, I forget, T-Sauce maybe, or EAA, something like that. But, uh, but yeah, so why did, why did they stop making it? I'm assuming it's, like I said, it's because they didn't sell any, but I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts. It's a pretty cool gun for what you pay. Just don't expect to win any sort of target competitions with it. Uh, would I trust my life with it? Probably not. I wouldn't trust my life with too many 22s, to be totally honest. I mean, they've got stuff like this, you know, the TX-22 out these days. This is kind of more of a novelty, I, I guess, at this day and age, being eight plus one. But it's super small. It, in theory, you could put this in a, in a pocket if you wanted to and just have kind of a backup thing. Just make sure if you do something like that, guys, make sure that the ammo you choose to run it with is reliable and proven. And based on my experience, not federal bulk. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel. I would really appreciate it. This video is not sponsored by anyone. But if you want to help support the channel, you can check out my Patreon or the merch tray underneath the video where I have a little bit of merch for sale. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.